Hello and welcome again. In the previous video, we started talking about the different kinds of uh, primality tests. Uh, one of them, one kind is the deterministic and the other one is probabilistic. Now, uh, I'm going to show you in this video a little bit more detail about first uh, a couple of examples of deterministic uh, tests and the idea of what the probabilistic tests are for primality. Okay, so let's start with some a couple of deterministic tests. Now, the first one, uh, I'm gonna give you here uh, the pseudo code for deterministic test. Uh, this code basically is based on the fact that if you have a number that is composite, means it's not a prime. Uh, there is at least one divisor that is less than the square root of the number. So, for example, if let's say uh, 35. You want to check that 35 is a prime number or not. You take the square root of 35 and check if there are any divisors between 1 and the square root of 35. That's basically the idea for this pseudo code that you see here. So, so let me explain a little bit the pseudo code. The pseudo code is going to start like this. So we're going to, uh, our variable test here will be a boolean. In this case will be true. So we're going to start with the boolean value true. Uh, meaning that uh, if this variable stays the same as the beginning, then it will say that uh, whatever the number n that we are testing is a prime number. And if the test is false, and then it will not be prime. Now, i equals to 2 here, it actually means these are the numbers that I'm going to try uh, for divisors or my number n. The number n is the one that I'm trying to determine whether or not it's a prime number. So I'm going to use a while loop. Uh, well, i is less than or equal to the square root of the absolute value of n. And remember, that's what I said, basically, if you have a composite number, it has to have at least one, one divisor less than the square root. So that's the idea here. So basically, we're going to check this. So, uh, so we're going to check if i is a divisor of n. Now, one of the reasons I'm putting the absolute value here is because I want to make this test also possible for non- uh, for negative numbers. So how do we check that i divides n? So basically what you have to do is you compute the remainder of n divided by i. That's why we start i at 2 because if i is equal to 1 there is no need to check that because 1 divides the number n of course. So we just start at 2. So if the remainder of n divided by i is equal to 0 that means that i is a divisor of n and because it's less than the square root then it has to be a composite number, not a prime number. So we update the variable test to false. And because we want to get out of the f this while loop here, I make my i equal to this uh, the absolute value of n. So that will make this false and, and it will end the, the while loop here. Now, if this test happens to be false, then the only thing I have to do is I have to increase the value of i. So maybe basically I'm checking all the numbers between 2 and the square root of the absolute value of n, all the whole numbers, or all the integers. So that's basically what I have here. Now you see this word that I put there says inefficient. So this is not really an efficient method. I mean, it works if the number n's are small, but for the numbers that we need to use in cryptography, this will take uh, a long time, and we don't want to do that. So that's why we call it inefficient. But this is one of those deterministic tests. You run it, and it will give you the answer for sure. So there's no doubt about it that this will give you the answer. This whole algorithm here will give you the answer. But this is not efficient. Another one will be the Wilson uh, theorem. And those, it's not that the Wilson theorem is an algorithm. It's just that the algorithm is based on the Wilson theorem. And the Wilson theorem, what it says is basically this. If you, if you have p hat here, it's a prime number that is equivalent to say that that number minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 modulo the number that we are talking about, the p hat here. Now, the factorial, remember, is you take the numbers all from 1 through that number, all the natural numbers, multiply them out. And so the remainder, basically, when you take this number plus 1, the remainder will be 0 when divided by the number itself. Now, um, I'm not going to go into the details too much of this one. The reason for that is because this is also inefficient. Imagine that 
P is a large number, P minus 1 will still be large and imagine taking the factorial of that. So that's not uh, very efficient either. And this is also a deterministic test, meaning that if you actually uh, check this and it happens uh, to be true, then, then of course then your, your number is, is a prime number. So those are the uh, the deterministic tests, uh, at least uh, two examples of them. Now let's talk about the probabilistic uh, primality test. So in this case, so let's read this here, these are more efficient, meaning that they're going to take less time or less comp or less steps to, to compute, but there is a catch. And remember the catch, I think I mentioned it already, um, probabilistic here is we're going to get an answer, uh, but it's not 100% uh, uh, sure that the answer will be correct. Now, that is, this is not that bad because the probability of many of the tests that we're going to use here, the probability of, of them being uh, or lying or being not true is really, really, really small. So, um, uh, it, it's good and in the sense that it's efficient, meaning that it's going to take less steps or less time. Uh, but there's a little catch there, but the catch is not really a big deal. So, the possible answer of most probabilistic uh, primality tests are two answers. Most of them is P is composite with 100% certainty. So, when one of these tests, we will we'll talk about uh, them later, when one of these tests says the number that you gave, gave me is composite or is not a prime, that is 100% sure that it is not a prime. Now, the other answer that one of the tests could give you is that the, the number that you gave is a prime. This is a true with a high probability. In very rare cases, the test will lie, meaning that it says, yes, the number is a prime, but in reality is a composed number, it's not a prime number. So that's what I mean by the test lies. The test lies means that it says, the test says P hat is a prime, but in reality it's not. Now when the test says it's composed, then you are for sure that it is. So in rare cases, this test lie. Now what is the idea of this primality test? So the idea of the primality test, uh, because we want to generate large primes, remember what we do here is we use a random generator number to generate a large number. Uh, we use a primality test. This primality test actually has another input which is a parameter for the primality test. This is a number that is put in here The primality test will use with the number p hat itself. Now, I will explain a little bit more in detail about what this a is later. Now, it seems a little bit weird that you're going to use another parameter for a primality test because you just have to check p hat whether this is prime or not. But uh, you will see in later that it's actually uh, much better to have this kind of parameter. So the answer will be uh, P is prime or P is composite and remember because this is a primality test here um, then the, um, usually what happens is we're gonna have um, I'm, I'm not choosing well the color but let's just leave it like that. So this is just a primality test. Uh, if it is a probabilistic primality test then the answer of being composite is 100%, but the answer of being uh, uh, prime, it has a high probability. Now, so as I mentioned, we use a probabilistic primary test with several values of A. The reason we're gonna use that is this. The probability test, probability test here for primarity, is gonna use a pair of numbers. PE is what we wanna check, and A is a parameter. Now, the probability that the test will lie, meaning that it's going to say it's prime, when actually it's not, is really small, is less than 2 to the negative 80. Now, I want to give you an analogy of how small this probability is, because it's important that you kind of are convinced that even though we are using probability test for primality, and we have a probability of getting it wrong, saying that the prime number is prime when reality is not, the probability of having that is just extremely small. So the analogy is this. 
uh, let's talk about this. What are the chances of that the probability test lies is much less than this? So this is the idea, 2 to the negative 80. How small is this? Is smaller than this probability. The probability of being struck by a lightning twice in your lifetime. And the probability of winning the Powerball. What I mean by this, by this is the following. If you can find a person, how rare, how often this test lie is as often as finding a person who has been struck by a lightning twice in their lifetime and that same person wins the Powerball. Now, these two things by themselves that really stimulate more probabilities. You probably don't know anyone who's been struck by a lightning twice and has won the Powerball. The same person. So that's how small the probability is. This is how uh, the number of times or how probably what is the probability of the test line. So it's actually quite, quite small. Now, in the next video, as you can see here, here uh, in this title that I have here at the bottom, in the next video, we're actually going to look at the miller rabin primality test, which is one of the most, call it famous, if you will, uh, test. Java actually uses uh, this kind of implementation of this test with, together with some other uh, techniques to check for primality. So Java has this kind of... Uh, function that checks for primality and it's based on this miller robin primality test so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop the video now and in the next video i'm going to talk about this uh, miller robin primality test which is actually based on a number theory again of course a number theory um, uh, theorem so i will talk to you about this in the next video